actually is. To, to, to everybody, you know, get you guys that are out putting roofs, you know, on houses and repairing cars and painting houses and putting asphalt on the streets, you know, <laughs> they they go home and get them a beer and kick back and, and watch wrestling and and uh, wish that they could do. That's what makes us so special because they wish that they could do what we do. And we've been blessed to live our dreams that we've had since we were kids, both of us. Yeah. We're, we're both fans and. If there's any two biggest fans in wrestling that have been blessed here, I use that word again, blessed to, to live <laughs> our dreams, it's me and Jimmy. And uh, to I can't think of one thing that I've ever dreamed of doing that I haven't done in the wrestling business, except the first what? time the first right. time I came to Louisville as for WWF when I was uh, when I was uh, doing this talent scout stuff, and I got to see you and Danny Davis's operation there. This is before you moved into the new building. I was so, and I told you I was so jealous. Yeah, 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 it was so it was perfect. You had your TV right there in the building. You had your wrestling school right there in the building. You done your own tapes right there. Danny Davis was a magician <laughs> with equipment and stuff. You had everything right there. You were calling your own shots. You were running your own wrestling company, and I was so jealous. Something I've always dreamed of doing, you know. And and uh, I was really jealous of you, Dan. It was, uh, but but you understand where I'm coming from. We, we've been very blessed yeah. to, to do what we've done. And, and is there one thing that you wish you could have done in the business you haven't? Because you've done way more than I have. As far as well, the promotion end of it, and, and, and I'd, I'd like to have managed Flair just to say I did it, but I did. You know, but at the same time, that's minor. But also, I think <laughs> I'd like to still be running my own wrestling company and calling my own shots. <laughs> <laughs> What did you see? Have somebody or something? Well, well, we found out that owning, <laughs> owning your own company and running your own company is two different things. Um, I still own it. I just can't run it. But that'll happen in time. Well, I still got um, this. You still own it. I don't. I don't have a wrestling company. I like to. I'm gonna start one one day. I'm going to start one one but day. But you know what? I just remembered something that we talked about in the car that I was supposed to. You were supposed to remind me to ask you about working with Luthes. Working with Luthes because I asked you if you'd ever worked I with Luthes. Never got a chance to. When I first started in, in Mississippi, when we already talked about that era, who was there and everything, Luthez, it was come, he was a friend of Frankie King and those guys, and he came in for a few shots. He was, to, he was wrestling then. And uh, he had a match with one of my Mongolians, one of the Samoan guys that I was managing. And uh, he was going to do a, a deal where he hit the ropes and I was going to pull his leg. Oh, oh, oh. First of all, first of all they, they tell me this in the dressing room. You know, I'm just a young kid. I'm just getting my real break, you know. And it's Luthez. Luthez want me to pull his leg. And I'm going, there's that, you know. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Into the finish. Boom, boom, he comes. I reach out to grab his leg. Missed it. <laughs> Missed it. He took two st step, step, turned around and goes, You stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> I, just, I, was, I, I was like the Wicked Old Witch on Wizard of Oz when they had the water dumped on her. <laughs> I'm melting. I, I, I melted at ringside, so that's it. My wrestling career is over. <laughs> Luthez just called me a stupid son of a bitch. I miss pulling his, his leg, you know, and I'll, I'll never forget. The, but you never had a chance to work with Lou, huh? I, I mean, I've met him and, and talked to him many times, seen him at conventions. I've, you know, uh, talked to him a number of times, but never in a professional atmosphere. Did you ever, so, were you, did you ever go to Cauliflower Alley? Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen him at Cauliflower Alley. I've been going since I've been going. I haven't seen you. <laughs> I got, well, I've, I've went several on, in Las Vegas several years ago. I went mm -hmm. a couple on the East Coast. I was a member um, for a lot of years. I just never went because I did, was always working. I did several conventions with him and, and the, the legend, the NWA champions get together in St. Mm -hmm. Louis, the mm -hmm. pay-per-view that time. But I mean, and I've talked to Charlie on the phone several times, and you know, I, I asked him for enough autographs, and I finally got embarrassed about asking because I hadn't signed him. his book, his right. book again, uh, a magazine, a picture, you know. So I've been, I was around him before he died, uh, numerous occasions, but I, it was always after he'd retired. I never got a chance to work with him when he was still in the ring. What was the first world championship match you ever saw in person as a fan? As a fan, the first world title match I ever saw in person was Jerry Lawler and Jack Briscoe in 1974 for the NWA title. And the second one... Oh, you remember the second one. I won't remember. The remember second I one the was one. January 1975, Jack Briscoe and Ron Fuller for the NWA title. My first one was uh, Dory Funk Jr. against Don Fargo. Mm. Our Broadway. I'll, never, I'll sit in front row in the Mobile Municipal oh Auditorium, my God. And, and I guess I was still in high school then, and I'll never forget it. It was just, it just. I never, first of all, I never seen Al Broadway before. Yeah, you know, 
and for it being for the NWA championship, it was the first time I'd ever seen the NWA championship, and it, it meant so much in those days. When, that, when we'd get to see the champion maybe once a year, if we were lucky, if we were really lucky, yeah. twice a year, and they would build up to it the whole year, you know, and he would come in and it meant so damn much. You know, they had championship prices. Yeah. First of all, I was all pay- tickets up a yeah, buck. I was right? paying like three dollars seat, three dollars anyway for my front row ringside seat, and yeah. I had to cut three or four yards in my neighborhood to get that three dollars to sit there. But championship prices, I had to pay four dollars to sit. Yeah, ringside. and and then you would go. Can you imagine that four dollars for a ringside ticket? What the hell's this business coming to? It was. It was just.